This is the last resort or the super finesse way that I like to catch fish. How's it going everybody? My name is Ethan Preston, pro team member here at Cast King. Welcome back to my video series, Outdoor Living with Ethan. Again, we're gonna continue with our ice fishing lineup of videos here, and I teased it in the last video. If you haven't, go back and check out the past few videos we're talking about ice fishing. This is the last resort or the super finesse way that I like to catch fish. Go ahead and check out all the other videos where I break down rods, reels for ice fishing that Cast King provides. Also my favorite way and the most aggressive way that I like to ice fish to call in all game species. Today what we're gonna do is we're gonna be talking about the rod setup as well, but we're gonna downsize it and change things up a little bit. Go super finesse to try and get those finicky fish to bite. And a lot of times people take for granted weather systems when fish are underneath the ice. Fish change just the same. The barometric pressure has no boundaries when it comes to ice fishing and storm front stuff like that. There are times and even more than it is an open water fish kind of suck to catch this time of year if they decide they don't want to eat. So when it comes to rod and reel, what I'm doing, I'm still running the Cast King Convert ice rods. I'm running the hard water model with the reel seat graphite. I am then ditching my medium action tip and I am using the medium light action tip because this technique is going to be a little bit more finesse or I should say a lot finesse than the last video we talked about and trying to get those real finicky fish to bite. So when it comes down to it, your fish are in a negative mood. I downsize, go real small, use the lighter tip and all we have here is a little bitty tungsten jig. Okay small hook on there and I have a little bitty plastic on there. This is the most finesse way that I know to try and get those fish to bite. We're gonna be talking about two options with these tungsten jigs, one with plastic and one with like cut bait or live bait, that kind of thing. So here you have it. It's hard for me to show the whole thing at once just because it is so small. I like to implement this technique Again, with high pressure, fish aren't biting, but it's an area where fish are constantly cruising through or you have started off with our first video where you've been aggressive, go to the, the next one where you use a spoon and stuff like that, and then the fish are still hanging around. They're curious, but they're not biting the more aggressive techniques. Again, we're using a lighter tip, we're dropping that down. I like to use a thicker tungsten jig, that way I can drop through. A lot of times if I'm fishing outside the house, there are slush in the ice hole and that jig won't go through real well. And also I've been targeting yellow perch over the last few years. And when that school is there, you gotta get down as quick as you can. So that's one of the reasons I go with a heavier tungsten jig. But try and look for one that has a thicker hook on there. I don't want that thing bending out, especially if you get a fish that really chokes it and you gotta go in there and dig that thing out. I don't want that hook bending out when there's a lot of fish around. My technique with this bait, drop it down, get it down there to the bottom. Again, a little bit heavier one. I'm gonna pick it up and shake it. I keep this closer to the bottom than I do the spoons or the rattle baits. I like to keep those six to 12 inches off the bottom. Here I'm sitting, I like to stay less than six inches off the bottom unless you have fish suspended. I like to hit the bottom, pick it up and shake it, hit the bottom, bounce it around, and then just kind of wait for that fish to come up. I don't necessarily pull this away from the fish, but little bitty wiggles and have that fish rise up to it on your graph and then you're, like I said, your bite just me, might just be boop, and that's the only thing that you're gonna get. Run plastics on there, any kind of grub looking plastics, black, white, and red have been my favorite colors, but you just gotta change it up. A lot of times it has to do with scent as well because you're not moving that bait around a whole lot. There's not a lot of action. That fish is probably in a more negative mood the way it is. So a lot of times they'll use their sense of smell to go ahead and finish on that. Another way that you can do it here, two options, kind of your live bait action. I've taken the plastics off and I've put wax worms. If you're not sure what wax worms are, they're a little larva stage. I'm not sure if it's a fly or something like that, but they sell it around up north here where you ice fish a lot. Your pan fish go absolutely nuts for them. I'll tip it with just wax worms, or if it's just a smell thing and that wax worm needs to finish them, but you get tired of threading wax worms on because they get soft and they break off like most live bait or cut bait does after a while, I will take one wax worm and hook it on that little tungsten jig with the plastic on there just for more added smell and bulk, that kind of thing. Otherwise, the next thing I've done is a tungsten jig and just a minnow head. We use fathead minnows around here. You go ahead, pinch your minnow head off, put it on that tungsten jig, and that is the only way. A couple years ago, we were actually able to catch and target smallmouth bass through the ice, one of the tougher fish to catch during ice season. They were in a negative mood, had a high pressure system come through, and we actually had an underwater camera down there. The fish were cruising on the bottom, not even cruising, they were just sitting on the bottom, belly on the bottom. You drop something in front of them, they just sit there and look at you like this. The only way we'll be able to get bites 
after the sun came up was use a tungsten jig and a little bitty minnow head drop it pound it in the bottom a mark would slowly come up and you just have to sit there and hold it and then all of a sudden that was your bite like that's the only thing only way we're going to catch up super finesse action so again, this is the most simplest way that I know to catch fish through the ice. It's just, it's super finesse. It's lighter tackle, lighter rod, that kind of thing, lighter line. Um, I try to stay away from it if I can, but there are times where this is the only setup that's gonna catch a fish. So I hope you guys found this information a little bit shorter video. It's pretty much self-explanatory. If you guys have any questions, make sure you drop them below. Just like all the other videos, I'll be sure to answer them and help you out the best I can. Again, my name is Ethan Preston, a pro team member here at Casking. Thanks for watching my video series, Outdoor Living with Ethan. Make sure to check out all the other videos on the Casking channel. Awesome people doing awesome things all across the world. And uh, yeah, tune in next time. Thanks for watching.